So I was washing the dishes this morning and it tends to be an activity that kind of zones me out and puts me into the Zen place where I have these interesting ideas. And so I thought I'd share that with you today. As I was washing dishes and putting things away and ordering everything, I just thought, wow, look how much time we spend taking care of things. Washing them, cleaning them, ordering them, putting them away, maintaining them, worrying about them, finding space for them. And that doesn't just go about dishes because I have many. Um, pretty have my favorite, you know, coffee cup collection, which I, which I do enjoy. It is an indulgence, not going to lie. But, you know, I started looking around and saying, wow. I've never had more of an overwhelming feeling than before to like cleanse and clear and just minimalize the things that I have. And I've given a lot of stuff away this year, a lot. I've gotten rid of a lot of stuff and I haven't bought a lot. And I think that was, that's been the key is just not doing retail therapy or, oh, it's a new season or holidays coming. Let's go shopping. Not looking for those excuses, but instead finding pleasure in things that are free. Like I said, like the sunshine. Um, nothing gives me more pleasure than sitting here in the sun and just contemplating and now talking with you. So when I realized, wow, that minimalism, you know, and I don't mean extreme minimalism, I'm not talking like Mary Kondo. I'm talking just having things that you need, of course, aesthetically beautiful that give you pleasure, but not having them get in your way, not having them eat your time, not having them, you know, define you. You know that famous scene in Fight Club, you know, where, where looking through, I think Brad Pitt has some kind of monologue and, and um, it's flipping through an Ikea uh, magazine and it's all about, oh, let's choose the things, the material things, you know, sofas and, and, and glassware that define who you are and create your, your look, your personality. It's so, that's so bullshit. The things don't define us. And you know, since you've been young to now, how many times has your style changed or your, you know, your favorite thing changed? How many times has your look changed? None of that defines you. Those are just things and phases that we go through and they're there to be used, not to use us, not to define us, but they're for, let's say, that materialistic pleasure that, you know, we, we should indulge in being here on earth in a material form. But overdoing it, and just being about that, being about consuming and, and defining ourselves and surrounding ourselves with just materiality is, um, I think it's put a lot of people in, in a tough place, whether that's financially or mentally or spiritually. And there's like no, he no more healing activity than to cleanse and, and, and remove those things and just put them away or just get rid of them or give them away so someone else can find pleasure. Um, in those in those same things and then it got me thinking wow what happens when we create space what happens when we get rid of things and and in society right now we're taught like to consume 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 because that's what gives us value that's what should you know make you feel good or gives you that endorphin you know rush but when you get rid of stuff okay and you make space and you clear your space it, it clears your mind because your physical space is a reflection, I believe, of your inner space, your internal space, uh, your mind space, let's say. And the more cluttered things are around you, I believe that that affects your thoughts and your mind and, and maybe even emotions feeling and being cluttered. And it, could, it works the other way too. If you're cluttered up here, there's no way the world around you is going to be ordered either, right? It's like a, it's a symbiotic relationship and one reflects the other. We're mirrors. Our, our, our external environment tends to mirror what we're going through or how we feel or, or who we are. And I think the first cue we can take is looking around us and saying, okay, what is my space? What is my world showing to me about myself? And if it's overwhelming, I think the first step to freedom is to cleanse and to clear. And of course, we all have our beloved things. But if you've got like a hundred favorite things, how much value does each actual thing have then? If you can have a hundred favorite things, right? Um, minimizing, prioritizing, and just crystallizing 
tends to put you in a good space mentally and just giving you the room to do the things you truly want to do and not be so worried about maintaining, whether it's maintaining an image, a thing, a house, a car, whatever it is that is binding you and holding you back. So in, let's say, in the Indian spiritual realm of philosophy and, and let's say, yeah, philosophy, I would say, what I've learned and one lesson that my mom did teach me which is wonderful, it so resonates with me today, is, you know, when, when we look at the world around us, okay, whether you look in, um, in the Vedas or just, you know, common Hindu and, and Sikh and, let's say, many Asian beliefs, the reality around us is Maya. Maybe you heard that word before. Maya means illusion. So everything around us truly on a spiritual level is not real. Okay, even these bodies we shed. So everything around us is Maya. It's an illusion. And lots of people think oh, that we can have an effect on the material world and we can manifest. But why would we manifest physical things? Everything I see is people talking about, oh, manifest money, manifest this, manifest that. How about just manifesting yourself to start? Not worrying about things. Because I believe the universe always provides exactly what you need if you let it. So when we hold on to things, right, how do we hold on to things? It's like in this kind of position, right? And this is quite an aggressive, an aggressive sign or aggressive symbol, right? And this is how we're holding on to the, to the world, the material world. Or we're trying to hold on to lovers or friendships or relationships or jobs or ideas actually about ourselves and the world around us. But it's always this action, right, which I find to be very exhausting. When you can learn to be just a little bit zen and not be so attached to the outcomes, you start to let go, right? And this is like this feeling is so freeing and it's so relaxing just to let go of all those things that we're holding on to so tight that we think give us satisfaction or meaning or status, but truly they're taking from us. They're not truly enriching us. So I believe that when we can start doing this, right, and letting go, we create space, and this space is what the universe needs to give you what you need. It's this void that we create that naturally will fill itself. And if we just meditate a little and just be thankful and humble and grateful, we will get all the things that we need and deserve to, to live this life, you know? Maybe that's not going to be a million dollars, but like who, who really is happy? Who has really been made happy by being rich or famous or all those things? I mean, you see the world around you. How many rich and famous or, you know, <laughs> materially wealthy people truly are happy? Let's be real, okay? True, true, deep happiness comes through connection with your source and comes through connections with others. They can't not be bought. It cannot be manufactured. It cannot be faked. And all of those things come naturally, just like the sunlight falls on us and reaches us and warms us. That is the same way our energy has to shine onto others. Anyway, it's the space that we're creating that allows that void to be filled. And if there's any emptiness that you've been feeling, that's the way to begin to fill it, not with things. And the way the world is going, um, this luxury that we've had, oh, whoops, there you go, <laughs> as the wind, there we go, uh, the luxuries that we've had might not be available to us very soon, and so before Things are taken away from us without our participation, without our approval. You know, I think tough times are coming, tougher times at least, and that we might not have the ability to buy and consume as freely as we do now at the whim, you know, of a season, of a holiday, of a, a birthday, whatever it is that we use to tell ourselves, it is time to go shopping, it's time to consume. The way to get out of that 
imprisonment that I spoke about before, about getting out of the rat race and getting out of that cycle of consumption and earning just to consume more. It's consuming you, right? It's consuming us. The way to get out of that car feels like a karmic cycle, to break that is to stop consuming the, th the things that are truly not adding value to our life. Like, why do we need to go out and buy more and more and more? Why do you need five or ten? Why do I need, like, you know, these many, these many cups or, you know, these many shoes or whatever it is? I mean, I have a lot of room also to cut down, and I am, and I'm doing it slowly. But we might not be able to just go on a whim and, and do those things. And if we were finding moment, momentary pleasure in them, that will be ripped away from us. So that's much more painful than just like having to do it yourself. Because if we're already consuming less, we're being more. So when the world does transform, and God forbid if there's some economic crisis or there's a huge war, it won't hurt so much because we'll know, okay, what is truly wor worthwhile for us, what's worthy, you know, of, of our investment, of our energy investment and time investment. And I think that's the lesson the world is about to get shortly, um, all of us included. And so the sooner we can prepare for that, the sooner you can make space for the ephemeral, for the things that cannot be touched but felt, I think the happier we'll be. I truly believe that. And so order your life now if you can. You know, order as you go. If you find the world around you or your space around you to be a mess, invest in yourself and start cleaning it up little by little. Start contemplating on the things that are there for your happiness or there for your enrichment and the things that are just holding you back and holding you down. Identify those things and then find a new home for them. You know, because you will be freer. The less you have to maintain, you know, the more you'll be able to invest back in yourself. So, yeah, that's, that's the thought I had over the, the, the kitchen sink, washing all my dishes. And, um, yeah, I think that's going to be the first step to filling that void. So, sort it out, clean up, you know, simplify. And on, as I say that, I'm going to finish my coffee and wash my cup. So cheers to you and until the next time.